The only chance we've got is both of you. One of the things that I really like about playing this character is he is thrown into these extraordinary circumstances. Shrinking, flying around on ants, entering quantum realms, and life-threatening stuff. One thing that we've always tried to sustain is dealing with everything with a little bit of a sense of humor. A lot of tricks in this movie that the audience hasn't seen before. You will see Ant-Man size action and giant size action, and you may see a lot of different size action in between. Hiya, champ. How was school today? <laughs> and then you have Wasp. Hi. She's someone that we've never seen in action on screen, and that's been great in terms of figuring out how she moves, how she fights, how she flies. You gave her wings and blasters. So I take it you didn't have that tech available for me. No, I did. There's so much action, and the stakes are so high. Immediately, the minute that we introduce the character of Ghost, the game changes. What took you so long? She just wanted to give me a hug. Wish me luck. Really? No. And from that moment, things don't stop moving. I wish I had a suit, even with like minimal powers, or maybe even just a suit with no powers. No. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbray here again with another review, this time of, well, Marvel's one, two, well, third most anticipated movie of the year anyway, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Of course, the original Ant-Man had a tortured production history, with Edgar Wright having famously left the project at the 11th hour, and director Peyton Reed, who at the time was best known for Bring It On, stepping in. While one of the lower-grossing Marvel films, it still made a bundle internationally and made more than enough domestically that a follow-up was really never in doubt. Now, the filmmakers promised more action for Evangeline Lilly's Hope Van Dyne, who finally gets to take the mantle of Wasp here, so they delivered. But that's not the only way that this plays out as a somewhat unique sequel to the original. While Paul Rudd's Scott Lang is still the heart of the franchise, this opts for an ensemble vibe, meaning the screen time is almost equally split between Rudd, Lilly, and, in a big surprise, Michael Douglas, whose origins as the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, get explored more with the gist of the plot centering around his attempts to rescue his wife Janet, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, who's been trapped in the quantum realm for 20 years. A note regarding the ever-complicated Marvel timelines. This one takes place after Civil War and sometime before Infinity War, but don't expect any major cameos, even though there are some nifty Easter eggs if you keep your eyes peeled. Like the first, it's a heist movie with Scott forced to help Hope and Hank while in the process of wrapping up two years of house arrest for helping Captain America in Civil War, an act which has made Hope and Hank fugitives and kibosh the romance between Hope and Scott. Now, there's lots of fun set pieces this time, although less in the way of all-out action, with no real villains this time out. Even the big bads are shown to be either conflicted, like Hannah John Kamen's Ghost, who's a breakout character, while Watton Goggins as Sonny Birch is essentially played for laughs. Similar to the first, Michael Pena steals every scene as the now upstanding Luis, while it's also a kick and flashback scene that de-aged Michelle Pfeiffer and Lawrence Fishburne, both of whom are good in small but important parts and could pan out in future films. I also really like the Christopher Beck score, which is among the better recent Marvel soundtracks, while Rudd, who has a writing credit, gets even more chance to play to his laid-back persona, making this an easy sell even to non-Marvel fans. Although looking at the box office statistics for the last few movies, does such a thing even exist anymore? While this is for sure a lower-key Marvel outing, it's nonetheless slick and fun, and Lily Rudd and especially Michael Douglas make for a compelling team. The Ant-Man series almost plays like a breath of fresh air given how weighty Black Panther and Infinity War were, even if it's unlikely it'll become a major favorite the way those will. Marvel's got this stuff down to a science, and this is more evidence that they're still a well-oiled machine, even when the movie isn't one of their major events. I give Ant-Man and the Wasp a 7 on 10, putting it somewhere in the middle of the Marvel pantheon, but still very good. I definitely recommend checking it out, and it's maybe even a squeak above the original. Oh, and by the way, stick around after the credits of this one. You don't even really need to be told, but yes, there are two scenes, one mid-credits and one after-credits, so... Unless it's your first Marvel movie, you're not going to be leaving the theater anyway, but take this as a word of warning. Until next time, I'm Chris Bumbray for JoeBlow.com. So, how long have you been Ant-Man again? Not long. It just sort of happened. I wish I could fight bad guys like you. I seem to mess it up almost every time. 
Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Hi. Like a partner. Dr. Pym, I actually heard what happened to you. You opened up the quantum realm. That's when this crazy could be ghost who like walks through walls and stuff. Stole your tech. And now she wants to take over the world or whatever. Who would have believed that in your hour of need, you would turn to us? That would be. Because we robbed you. Do you remember? That's us. The only chance we've got is both of you. Ant-Man and the Wasp teaming up. Follow my lead. She seems more intense. go low, I'll go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? We're gonna die. I don't wanna die. We didn't die. Hey, what I miss? We were just tiny. It takes two to make a thing go I was partners with Hank on a project called Goliath. How big did you get? My record, 21 feet. You? 65 feet. 65. If you two are finished comparing sizes... 65. <laughs>